Nortel and my feature set is what Nortel gives me. I don't buy a Lucent 5e and my feature set is what Lucent gives me. I don't buy whatever device it is and I have what all the rest of you have because it's the same stuff. What you do then is you start to program in the software richness as you can actually differentiate the look, the feel, the quality of your offering. For example, and, and I'll use Android, uh, not because I have tested an Android device, I haven't seen one yet, but one of the things they're going to do is the actual display, the way the keys are laid out on my display, I can customize all that if I'm the service provider. I might even be doing, able to do it as a user. So right away, I may be using the same hardware on the same switch and the same software platform. It might be running Linux, whatever it happens to be, but my experience of this device is probably going to be more customizable than anything I can imagine. And I've argued yesterday that this is a good thing for service providers. Am I crazy about this? From, from, let me give you a limo's perspective here. I, mean, I think it's, uh, I think, I think what you're saying is spot on in that I think, again, that, that when I was talking before, I said openness is, is you know, it's reflecting a number of um, trends that are happening at the same time, both kind of business, technical, and, and cultural. And I think that, you know, the idea that, you know, as a consumer, I should have the right to customize my phone is a somewhat new concept, especially if you look at the kind of historical, look at it from a historical perspective. Um, I think that, you know, the next generation of, of uh, operating systems needs to be modular. And I think that, you know, openness uh, demands that. It demands that you know, instead of having these kind of monolithic options, whether you're talking about a switch or you're talking about a mobile device, um, you know, monolithic, monolithic systems uh, just won't work in the next generation of, of computing and the next generation of, of uh, telecommunication services. And I think that, you know, what, what we're working on and, and to a lesser extent what Android's working on uh, is, you know, gives the ability to have, again, a common, common foundation that will enable uh, open interoperable services uh, but definitely uh, enable and encourage innovation at the application layer and at the, at the user interface layer so that, um, you know, the last mile or the, whoever it is delivering this device to the consumer uh, can put their stamp on it or the consumer may put their own stamp on their device. Uh, so I think that, you know, that's, that's definitely the, the, the direction we're heading in and it's important for the uh, different constituents in the, in the industry to work together to make sure that this type of vision can happen. Now, there's going to be more than one person in this audience who's thinking, yeah, five, ten years, maybe even optimistic about that. This, this is not going to affect my business. <laughs> you think that's reasonable or unreasonable? Me? Anybody who wants to answer it. I don't really uh, care. Well, it's a huge market. So, uh, you know, five to ten years, it's, it's going to affect somebody's business. It's affecting people's business today. And we, um, we're, we just launched and we're already affecting um, certain parts of the business community. Uh, so in, in five to ten years, as, as other carriers start to open up parts of their network with APIs to allow, as you mentioned, customization of applications away from a standard Nortel set feature set, it's, you're going to start seeing that. Um, and things like what you're doing and uh, Android and others, um, absolutely. But, you know, just, just to add on that, I might say it's, it's, it's very real today. And, and if you look at, and again, specific to the mobile space here in the U.S., you look at this whole thing around openness, right? Um, you know, all the, the, the major operators were very reticent to embrace openness, and then as soon as one announced it, there's this, now there's big race to compete to see who's most open. You know, Verizon has their open development initiative, and now AT&T is more open. And, mm -hmm. frankly, I think both are doing a commendable job of moving towards openness. But what's interesting, when, when I speak to the operators and the representatives I work with at those companies, is understanding their, their programs and services about how they want to actually support openness. So, for example, Verizon uh, has their open development initiative and their open developer initiative. I think I just read that they just certified their first open device on the network. Right? So, meaning that this is, not, this is a non-retail device that... You know, as, a, as an OEM or, or as a distributor, you can bring direct to consumers that they can then be certified to run on the Verizon network. You know, that's, that's a pretty big thing for a CDMA carrier to do. Um, but what gets more interesting is kind of their, their long-term vision, which is not five or ten years down the road, uh, but it's, it's a couple years down the road, where you know, they will have a, a full retail program to support openness, and they will you know, have to innovate on services. They'll have to make you know, more creative portals and applications and platforms uh, to make sure that they you know, maintain that customer relationship, which will be you know, underpinned through customer service, but ultimately you know, they need to have compelling applications for consumers to, to consume. 
I got a little concerned about a couple years ago when I started spending more time with software types and basically challengers, over-the-top application providers. The thing that really struck me, because I've been in telecom and cable for a long time, and we usually talk about our margin or the cost of interconnection or the difficulty of interconnection or IMS or some technical standard. And what I really was struck by is developers always talk about user interface, mm -hmm. user experience the value. And of course I'm thinking, whoa, we're on the wrong track here, guys. We never talk about customers. And actually that was sort of my own narrow-mindedness. The truth be told is these companies are normally small startups. If they don't find a human need to satisfy, they die. So they have to stay focused on consumer experience all the time. Telcos, we can make some mistakes and still survive if we're large enough, right? So we're sort of not that focused on user experience. But that's really striking to me culturally. I think in the communications business, we spend too much time talking about our dirty laundry and our problems. We don't spend enough time talking about consumers and what they want. I mean, I was on the panel at another show, and I had some very senior executives, and I just asked them, so what are the objections that people have to unified communications? And I didn't get a single answer. They had no idea. So, and again, they're senior executives. They don't necessarily communicate with their own sales force. They don't talk to customers. They talk to service providers who's got someone who talks to a customer. So there's just, they're very much re removed from this. But I felt very uncomfortable when I couldn't get a clear answer about why is unified communications, whatever you think that is, not being adopted faster. Is it our language? Is it our value prop? Is it the pricing? What is it? Do people not need the service? And we're just trying to push something on them they don't want? No answer. All right, so that's kind of frustrating for me, I gotta tell you. You know, but, Gary, I was just gonna say, I mean, you know, to AT&T's credit, and I think you, you raised this yesterday, um, you know, people love their iPhones, right? That's, that's their experience with AT&T, I mean, except when they get the customer service, which is a different issue. But, you know, that's their, if everything's going all right, I mean, that's, that's their experience. And AT&T does what it does, great. Um, and, and Apple's doing what it does, great. So that's a partnership, and that's a win-win. It, it, would, it, you know, it will be interesting to see if there's a shift in carrier perspective, carrier could be cable or, or, or incumbent, whatever, um, about, about trying to partner with a ribbit or partner, I mean, and there is a partnership right here with, with Lima, um, to engage in more active partnerships with customer-facing entities. Um, do, they do what they do well, and the carriers provide the connectivity. I mean, right now you've seen a or you have seen historically a, is this sort of confrontation. Oh, they're competitive, they're gonna take market share away from us. Um, you know, that, that maybe that doesn't need to be the case. Um, and so just throwing that out there to get people thinking, but uh, you know, just the AT&T um, Apple experience has been a, a positive one for I think both parties. Well, I think that's where we've gotta go. So this is my personal pet peeve these days. But. Uh, so I love the unified communications comment. I have a slide that I kept from uh, 2000 uh, as director of value-added services for North Point Communications, a DSL company, had a slide in there and said, Unified Communications, a $48 billion market opportunity. I have a slide from last year. It says, Unified Communications, $48 billion opportunity. Uh, it's, it's still the opportunity. And, and part of the thing that, that we saw at AT&T when we tried to um, look at, the, at what was happening with that bundle is how do you position it, how do you sell it? Once you, once you make a feature stack as rich as a unified comms and you talk to an individual, there's no edge to that sharp knife. It's, it's, it's like a ball of pins, right? And one of the pins is gonna stick and the others aren't. And that was a, a for me that was a really sort of an insightful experience as we tried to bundle and uh, package a bunch of services together and communicate to a marketplace, hey, now you've got this whole stack of things. It turns out, not everybody in the room needs one feature in there. But if I sat with every one of you and I walked through that list, I guarantee every one of you will find something in that that you're gonna find really compelling. And that's what we, we realized from the business standpoint. Um, if you take the feature list and you make it available to the business or the, the vertical or the horizontal that can use that feature, and you give them the tools to adopt that feature themselves on their own terms, they can make that feature worth far more than it was as a bundled group being sold by a carrier. And so. So you don't sell a PBX, you sell a feature? It's, you, <laughs> we sell a toolkit <laughs> with all the features <laughs> in it. <laughs> if you need a screwdriver, reach in and get yeah. that. Okay. Gentlemen, I'm getting the, you're dead uh, sign, so thanks very much. Very engaging and really enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank you.